Um, we also know that a part of your activity is also to review of um, revenue allocation formula. So uh, I actually recall um, some issues that you have with regards to tax and revenue that happened um, some time ago where um, one came some states some people actually say that okay you you don't want um the revenues coming or the igr coming from a state that embraced um liquor but then you want their money and then all that discrepancies that came at that time so how were you able to resolve that <laughs> well you see nigerian politicians they are very funny people all the monies from wherever they are coming if they have been deposited in the federation account we now ours is to share so whether you are so regardless of the any governor coming to say you are sharia state so you shouldn't get the liquor money and all that's so not you, part you, of your you, mandate you will see it may be very difficult if to say that uh we are to comply with that demand it is going to be very difficult to separate this money when are you going to separate the money for liquor for food for this thing for rent for and so on and so forth it is going to be very very difficult so and you remember that Nigeria is a secular state. So as far as we are concerned, we are operating based on the principles of secularity. So it has, there is no any religion in what we do. We are only being guided by the principles of the constitution. Therefore, uh, uh, we don't have time for that. And uh, it is going to be very tedious, like I have said. So for those states who may not like to collect money from the liquor money, uh, I don't know how they will go about it. In the words of Obi Ezekwesili, a leader of the hashtag Bring Back Our Girls and a senior economic advisor of the Af of Africa uh, Economic Development Policy Initiative, she once said, the federal government should do the right thing first, or first things first, should change, change should begin with those who promised change. Okay. Now let's take our next quote from Bob Menendez, who is an American lawyer and politician. He once said, we need to have a strong economy that can create employment opportunities and that can also produce the revenue that we need to defend our country at home and abroad. Jeff Bezos, the founder, executive chairman and former president and also CEO of Amazon once said, market leadership can translate directly to higher revenue, higher profitability, greater capacity, uh, capital velocity and correspondingly stronger returns on invested capital. And our last quote is from Scott Adams, an American author and cartoonist who once said, remind people that profit is the difference between revenue and expense. This makes you look smart. Okay, now let's see how all of this quote relates to what we'll be discussing tonight. Very warm greetings and welcome to Deconversation. We're reaching you from Kaftan's television studio here in the nation's capital, Abuja. I am Annabelle Oji. Now, the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission is an agency of the Federal Republic of Nigeria that oversees the revenues accruing to and, re and disbursement of such funds from the federal account. The body also ensures that there is conformity and equity in the nation's revenue allocation formula. Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission was established by Decree Number 49 of 1989 and later amended by Decree 98 of 1993, now RMAFC Act. But now recently, the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission Amendment Bill scaled second reading at the Senate. This was sequel to the presentation of the lead debate on general principles of the bill by the sponsor Olubumi at Detumbi during plenary. The bill is titled a bill for an act to repeal and reenact the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission Act 2023. He said that the bill sought to reinforce the mandate and powers of the commission as a body saddled with the responsibility of monitoring revenue reg generation and disbursement on behalf of the people and the government of Nigeria. So I'm sure you want to know how taxpayers money, your money, and everyone's money are spent and disbursed. I've got the perfect person to answer all of your questions, and we'll do that after this time out. But I always have the right person, right? Let me bring our guests after this short break. Please stay with me.
In case you just joined us, this is The Conversation. We are reaching you from Kaftan Television Studio here in the nation's capital, Abuja. Tonight, we'll be discussing with Kabir Usman Kukandaka. He is Federal Commissioner, Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission. It's great to have you on this show today, sir. Thank you for having me. Mm. Is it okay to just call it RAMFAC? RM. Is, can, yeah. can we just do RAMFAC? Uh, well, uh, some people may not uh, understand, understand that way, it right? properly, so it is better should be pronounced as it is. Okay, great. All right, now, so let's start by understanding and knowing your organization. What are your um, constitutional responsibilities and functions of the Revenue Mobilization and Allocation of Fiscal Commission? Well, thank you. Maybe before I will answer you that question, I will have to tell you that um, I'm not the chairman of the commission. I'm only a commissioner there. So mostly what I'm going to say will reflect my personal opinion. And uh, I take responsibility for all I would like to say here, but we're going to say it in good faith to Nigerians. Uh, Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission uh, is a commission, is one of the constitutional commission that is enshrined in the 1999 constitution as amended. Uh, as the name suggests, we have some clearly defined role as a commission in Nigeria and a very vital one for that matter. Uh, the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission, we have certain stated functions Paragraph 32 to the second schedule of the 1999 Constitution as amended, provided certain role A, B, C, that is to say, we are responsible for monitoring the accruals to the Federation account. And also, we disburse. Okay. These are two most important functions we carry out. We monitor the accruals and also we disburse what is there to the federating unit. Okay. And then B, we are responsible for reviewing the revenue allocation formula in the country from time to time. Ideally, after every, let's say, five years, we need to review the formula so that each federating unit or the subnationals, that is the federal, uh, the federal, state, and local government get a fair share of what they are supposed to get from the federation account. And D, we have another important function of which I am the chairman of that committee. That is the committee that is to determine the remuneration of public, political, and judicial office holders in the country. Okay. So when we talk of the this category of people, political, public, and the judicial, uh, we are looking at it as specified by our function. Uh, for example, we have elected officials. That is from the president, members of the National Assembly, governors, members of the state assembly, chairman of local government council, councillors, and so on and so forth. And also we have, apart from the elected ones, we have the non-elective, like the ministers, federal commissioners, special advisors, secretary to the federal government, and so on and so forth. Okay. And then we have also the judicial, which we, of course, uh, we also take care of, the, of their salaries. So these are the three most important functions. And apart from that, we also advise government on fiscal matters mm -hmm. because we have a whole department responsible for advising the government on fiscal efficiency because we advise government on how to go about improving their revenues. We advise government on how to spend their money, A how state to source for every every aspect of government. Okay. Because we are not working only for the federal government; we are working for the federation. Okay. We are working for the subnationals too. Mm. Therefore, we have concern with what is happening at the local government level, at the state, and as well as the federal level. Does it concern public organizations also? 
Well, when we talk of uh, public organizations, uh, uh, public organizations come under a particular government, whether it is federal government, whether it is a state, whether a local government. So we are basically dealing with the governments, and the government are dealing with other subunits under their sphere of influence. Mm, okay. yes. Great. All right, so you've actually made a uh, mention. You mentioned a lot of things that we're going to unbundle as the conversation goes forth, especially with regards to the committee that you are uh, um, chairing. Now, let's talk about, let's go to the mission of the commission. It states to ensure effective mobilization of all revenue accruable to federation accounts, advice on fiscal matters, and monitor effectively all remittances for equitable and fair disbursement to the beneficiaries to promote national unity under relevant extant laws. So how do you actually monitor the allocation that is disbursed from um, the federation accounts in this well, regard? Well, as a statutory or as a constitutional body, like I have said, we have a clear mandate to monitor accruals. Uh, it may interest you and the public to know that the Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Allocation Commission, we have responsibility to monitor what the NNPC, for example, is doing, how much amount of oil they are selling, how much they are contributing to the Federation account. The central bank, we monitor what they are doing. We also monitor what the Federal Inland Revenue Service are doing. So by this, we are overseeing them to ensure that all the monies that are due for the Federation accounts are duly remitted. Apart from that, from time to time, we also impact on exercise, a recovery exercise. We, in many state and local governments, for example, they are not remitting the taxes they are supposed to remit for the federation account. Mm -hmm. They collect, for example, VAT. They collect 10% uh, uh, of the contract, you understand. So... All these taxes they are collecting, they are supposed to be remitting them back to the Federation account for further redistribution to each type of government. But in some cases, you find that some states are owed a lot of money or local government because they are not remitting such monies. So from time to time, we impact on exercise. We go and monitor. We see your books. How much have you remitted? How much is it remaining? When are you going to pay it? We, this is part of the ways we are doing to mobilize such funds. And uh, there are certain organizations, we've been discussing with them on how to improve the nation's economy. There are so many aspects of the economy that is not being taxed. So honestly speaking, we have more than enough ways to raise money for this country. Only that uh, uh, we are not doing what we are supposed to uh, some are not well captured, and uh, we are looking forward to see that in the new dispensation to ensure that everybody is paying what he is supposed to pay. So these are some of the ways we, we do to monitor. So we make sure that you are, what you are supposed to give into the Federation account, you are doing it correctly. Because some people, if what is due for the Federation account, let's say, is uh, 1 billion. Some people will just uh, release 1, million, 1 billion and return 4 billion. It is only when you go after them, when you mm. check them, you ensure, you see their books, how much have they collected, how much have they remitted, before they will now say, hey, we, will, we, will, we will remit. We now give them deadline. Do this, do that. We are expecting by social period, you must have redeemed all what is, you are supposed to do. So these are kind of uh, ways we are monitoring some of these revenues. Mm. Okay, so uh, that's actually the way you also generate um, revenue and block leakages, right? Mm. So how how is it coming along, especially for agencies or state governments who might decide to rescind on that? How has it been for you? Yes, uh, uh, we've been trying as much as possible. And uh, when we go to a particular place, and uh, we realize that you are defaulting, we'll give you time. We'll give you time to redeem what you are supposed to. Okay. But where you are not able to do that, we'll ask the Office of the Accountant General to deduct it from your, from the amount that is going to you, the distributable well, amount fact. that is from the pack. Okay. But we don't go to that extent. Oh. Normally, we normally have understanding. Okay. Or we set a deadline, they normally send in these monies, uh, but there is a lot to do. 
Mm. And uh, what we are trying to do as a commission, we are also looking for amendment in our act mm. that will enable us to even punish people. For now, we don't have power to punish. That's why some of the things are just happening. Supposing we have power to sanction you, the thing will have been more better. But we are looking for that improvement in our amendment and in our act so that we may be able to sanction you, to punish you. But for now, it's advisory. Uh, oh. Yes. Okay, so we'll still talk about that later on. But then we understand that one of your activities states that uh, monitoring of revenue accruals into and disbursement from Federation account. Now, over time, we've heard reports from um, st some states lamenting that they don't get adequate or the right allocation accrued to them from FARC. So how have your organization been able to resolve this? Well, I'm not sure if there is any state that is not being fairly treated as far as revenue mobilization and fiscal allocation is concerned. And uh, it may also interest you and the public to know that the commission is being represented by 36 commissioners. That is to say, each state is having one commissioner, uh, uh, different from other commissions. Okay. Some commissions are only about six or seven members maybe one commissioner representing a particular zone. But in this our case, because it is a monetary issue, it has to do with the subnational, the state and the local governments, and it has to do with equity and fairness. We make sure that the, the, those who invest in the constitution and make provision for the commission ensure that there are 36 members in the commission so that at least every commissioner is, is representing his state. Despite okay. the fact that he is working for the Federation. So I'm telling you that um, such kind of injustice, uh, it may happen perhaps maybe mistakenly. Apart from that, I think there is no any state that will be crying that justice will not be made to that state. And uh, we have a formula of sharing this revenue. We just don't share it anyhow. There are certain criteria which all state are aware of, all local governments are aware of. So on that basis of that criteria, we allocate. For example, we allocate certain percentage on the basis of population. Okay. Number two, on the number of school enrollment you have in your state, the landmass, the rainfall, number of hospital beds. So these are some of the indices we use to arrive. So if your state is doing good, for example, in revenue generation, because we award a certain percentage if you are able to work on your revenue. So the more rev independently, the more revenue you mobilize from your state, mm. eh, the more money we'll give you. Away. That is we are encouraging you. That is, you are behaving accordingly. You are doing the right thing. So by now, most of the state that were earlier on, their internal generated revenue was almost more than 500 million. Some of them are 2 billion. Some of them are 3 billion. So on that basis, you also get an increment from the Federation account. Mm -hmm. We reward your efforts. Uh, okay. The same thing, the number of hospital beds. If you are a lazy governor or if you are a lazy chairman of a local government, you cannot provide for your people. You cannot look after their health and welfare. You don't care to improve the hospitals. You don't build more hospitals. You get less from the Federation account. So if you are building more hospitals, the more hospitals you build in your local government or in your state, the more also the money you get from the Federation account. Okay. And similarly, the more schools you are building to mm. provide education for your people, the more you will get. Therefore, you see there are internal motivated fa motivation factors. We are motivating state based on this criteria so that you continue to look after the welfare of your people, their education, their health, and the economy. So on that basis, you now get more. So I want to believe that uh, every state, as we can see from our motto, we are treating everybody fairly eh, and equitably. And, so, uh, and, 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 and in a just manner. So we don't just allocate this money arbitrarily. We allocate it on certain basis. Right now, as you may be aware, that um, we even send into the state, the Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Allocation Commission, 
we send them normally at a given period we give them notice okay yes that now we want to collect data prepare your own data currently we had uh, we had an innovation previously we just go on manually as a commission to collect this data from from the state and the local government uh, now we have gone digital we provide a platform we now ask them to come for the tooling program so that you can digitally enter your data as far as the primary school and secondary school enrollment in your state is concerned the number of hospitals bed you have the your igr as certified by auditor general and so on and so forth and later on we will go for verification we now go and authenticate what you have provided in your data pool if everything is correct we will now come back we do some analysis we arrive at a, maybe uh, you get some increase. For example, now the census is just around the corner. I was going to ask about census. Yes. So that's going, is it also going to be a deciding factor when the census is um, done. You see, that is why <laughs> that is always a problem with the census result in this country. Mm. Uh, There's always that argument. There is always argument. Mm. And maybe what you would like to ask yourself is why is it that there is always argument when the census figures are out? It is because every state wouldn't want to be shortchanged. Because we large chunk of money is being allocated to this federating unit on the basis of the population of the state. So for example, Lagos, Kano, uh, Rivers, as some other states are getting large sum of money from the federation account on the basis of the uh, population. Mm. Some state, like my state, Gombe state, like Ikiti state, are receiving less. We are the last two from the bottom because of the population. So if your population is less, nobody will give you much money to spend. The, we are spending for the welfare of the people. So the state that are having more number of people they will get huge amount of money to take care of such people. Mm -hmm. So because of that politics, now whenever the census is being carried out and the figures are being reeled out, you find that there will be argument. For example, if for now at the end of this census exercise, supposing your state was enjoying, let's say, a population of 5 million people, Mm. After this exercise, especially that technology is being introduced, maybe we're going to have a very fair census. Maybe your population will drop. I'm not preempting. Maybe the population from 5 million will now drop to, let's say, 4 million. Mm. So if now your population drops from 5 million to 4 million, equally, your allocation, allocation from the federation drop. account will also drop in mm. that aspect. In okay. that aspect alone. So, you see, that is why always census has been very controversial because it is attached to revenue allocation. Mm. <laughs> you understand? So, this is why you are having problems from time to time when, whenever there is census in the country. All right. So, before we continue, just for the sake of our viewers who don't understand, I've seen people asking, what is the difference between the Federal Inland Revenue Service and um, Revenue Mobilization Allocation and um, um, Fiscal Commission? What, what are the differences? in activities uh federal revenue service have their own act which empowers them to collect revenues on behalf of the federal government okay revenue mobilization and fiscal allocation commission like i have said we are to monitor and to distribute Federal Revenue Service, they don't have power to distribute. It's only for them to say this month, this is how much we have collected from the banks, from other government revenue generating agencies, from everywhere. They will tell us this is what we have collected this month. The NNPC will tell us this is how much has come to the, we have collected 
I will send it to the Federation account, the central bank, and any other body. The fundamental difference is that we as a commission, we are the commission responsible for the distribution. Nobody will distribute that money. It is only the Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Allocation Commission. So you now see the fundamental difference. Okay, so for those states that have not yet um, returned, that you have to give them timeline to um, return their uh, the revenues, so I, that's just your job? It doesn't concern the FIRS, right? You so see, you give some states like we, deadline. We, we work hand in hand with the Illa Revenue. And uh, it also may interest you, I'm also a member of that committee because we work like National Assembly. Okay. We work in different committees. So in one committee, you are either a chairman or you are a vice chairman or you are just a member of that committee. I am a member of the Federal Ella Revenue Committee. So we survive. We see what they are doing. We see their books. Huh? And then where necessary, the commission will go and help in the recovery because we also have the powers. But the power of collection reside with the Federal Illa Revenue Service. They are the one to collect. But we can, we can monitor, we can advise, we can complement uh, in the collection exercise, but we don't have the right to collect any cobo from anybody. All right. Yes. All right. So now um, we also know that a part of your activity is also to review of um, revenue allocation formula. So uh, I actually recall um, some issues that you have with regards to tax and revenue that happened um, some time ago where um, one came, the, the, some states, some people actually say that, okay, you, you don't want um, the revenues coming or the IGR coming from a state that embraced um, liquor, but then you want their money. And then all that discrepancies that came at that time. So how were you able to resolve that? <laughs> well, you see, Nigerian politicians, they are very funny people. And uh, like you have said, uh, some states, like I have seen on your dashboard here, that um, claim to be Sharia states. Mm. Well, that was then. And it was political. Okay, Sorry. that was then, yes. not now. Well, you see, now the issue has died down, isn't it? Unlike before, because it was political. And uh, to tell you that uh, Sharia is nothing, but a daily ways of living for a typical Muslim. There is nothing special about it. All, all the days, all the nights, it has been Sharia. You either comply or you are not. So the issue of that uh, revenue co coming from the source of LICO, uh, as far as our commission is concerned, we don't have any issue to do with that one because we are uh, a federal government agency or a commission. We have a constitutional responsibility. And uh, as far as we are concerned, uh, uh, there is nothing religious about our function. So we all discharge what is our mandate so in mm. doing so, all the monies from wherever they are coming, if they have been deposited in the Federation account, we now ours is to share. So whether you are... So regardless of the, any governor coming to say you are Sharia state, so you shouldn't get the liquor money and all, that's so not you, part you, of your you, mandate. You will see it may be very difficult if to say that uh, we are to comply with that demand. It is going to be very difficult to separate this money. When are you going to separate the money for liquor, for food, for this thing, for rent, for and so on and so forth? It is going to be very, very difficult. So, and you remember that Nigeria is a secular state. So as far as we are concerned, we are operating based on the principles of secularity. So it, uh, there is no any religion in what we do. We are only being guided by the principles of the constitution. Therefore, uh, uh, we don't have time for that. And uh, it is going to be very tedious, like I have said. So for those states who may not like to collect money from the liquor money, uh, I don't know how they will go about it. But definitely I will telling you that um, the issue is uh, unlike before. It has lessened. You don't hear it anymore. You don't hear it anymore.
All right. Clearly, there's a lot to unbundle from this conversation, and we will definitely get right to it after this time out. Join us again. Okay, so now for President Muhammadu Buhari, that will be leaving seat anytime soon. Um, are you going to tell us his severance package so that some people would actually just oppose it with when he leaves? Because the, a lot of people are already at the edge saying, we are waiting to check what um, was brought in and then what he's leaving with. Well, uh, uh, as far as that act is concerned, and that is why we deem it fit to review it, I'm telling you, you are going to laugh if you hear what the president of this great country is collecting as a severance gratuity, can you believe that the severance of gratuity as provided for in that act is only just about 10 million naira? What is 10 million naira to a president of a economy of as big as an Nigerian economy? Is that outside allowances? That is the severance gratuity. That is all he's getting. As you work as a government employee or as any employ, employee of any organization, at your terminal end, they give you a certain amount of money. So this is the money that you are to get to cushion the uh, the effect of losing your job. So if you are paying Nigerian president 10 million naira, or you are paying a state governor 7 million naira, or a federal minister, you are paying him 7 million naira. Is that serious? I think I'm asking you whether whether you feel uh, in some it, like in some regional bank governors some companies in nigeria there was a company that i know a cement company where the top executives have been retired and collected 300 million 500 million naira as a guidance gratuity but i also have some companies that during the covid 19 um, pandemic and the lockdowns they decided to shut out um staffs just because they could not pay th that staff so like i asked again are we following the um what we can afford that's where i'll leave it are we actually following what nigerians can afford if you had uh, private organizations who shut out people because they could not afford them they realized that okay we can actually do without xyz amount let's do with xy amount can we actually afford this you see there is a goal of difference between government and uh, private sector Welcome back. If you just joined us, this is The Conversation. We're reaching you from Kaftan's television studio here in the nation's capital, Abuja. If you just joined us, you've actually missed out on a whole lot, but then you can still join in the conversation. As I guess on the show today is Kabir Usman Kukandaka. He is the Federal Commissioner, um, Revenue, Mobilization, Allocation, and Fiscal Commission. All right, before we went on that break, we've actually talked about quite a lot of things, but then I know that you advised uh, federal and state governments on fiscal efficiency methods by which their revenue can be increased. That You also talked about that before when we started the show. So for some state that are supposed to be at the top with regards to their internally um, generated revenues, states um, that should be competing globally in terms of what they generate from their coffers, states like um, Abia, where they have so many international markets, states like um, Benue states where they have um, agricultural produce, states like Bayelsa, which is um, the goose that lays the golden eggs, states like Zamfar, quite, just to mention a few. Now, how best do you advise this state and their um, state governors to creatively indulge in activities that can increase their IGR, just as you have in some other states that are doing very good. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, you see, we have a great responsibility in this country to advise each government on the need to mobilize adequate resources for the development of their people. Monies from the center, that is from the federation account, may not be enough for every governor in his own state, for every chairman in his own local government to meet up with the developmental challenges. Mm. That's why we encourage governments to mobilize. From time to time, we organize seminars for the state and local governments. From time to time, we move around the country trying to encourage the state government to diversify their economy so that they will get more revenues. I am also a member of Mobilization and Diversification Committee. We move around this country 
to advise governors. There are so many potentials, economic potentialities that are then wasted in this country. I'm sorry to say that while some governors are very serious, some are not. Some only believe in just collecting the little stipends they can collect from the Federation account. You remember when our president-elect, Bola Ahmed Tunibu, when he was the governor of Lagos, see what he has done to turn around the economy of Lagos by improving on the IGR. Uh, there was a time when there was a problem between him and the then president, where even the allocation from the Federation account has been blocked by the federal government just to steeple Lagos State. See what they have done to improve and even to sustain themselves during that time. That is a very good case that every state should emulate that they can do without the federation account. So, thank God, uh, many of the state governors, many of the state governors, I'm very glad to inform you that they have tried very much to improve on their IGR. Okay. But that is not enough. Each of the state, there is need to replicate three or four, five times of the current IGR. When we talk of the replication, or to double up may not necessarily mean increasing taxes. Mm. But you have to widen the net. I like the fact that you say may not necessarily increase taxes. Yes, because a lot of people figure that it has to go, it's, it's all tax. Ah, no, no, no. You have to just widen the tax base. There are many goods and services that are not being taxed in this country. Mm. They are going free. And they would give you a lot of money. Number two, we should go on manufacturing. That will provide jobs and from this job, you get profit, government get tax, people get work, they also been taxed. So a lot of tax now will be coming from the productive activity of the manufacturing company and from the citizens who are working there. So if we do this, more money will come so that we can satisfy the yearning of our fellow countrymen. Otherwise, just to stay in and rely on the Federation account, uh, but it is not going to take us anywhere. We have a lot of economic... For example, there is a saying that uh, the amount of gold that is deposited is Zamfara. If it is well harnessed, it's going to double the economy or even triple the economy of Nigeria. Mm. But why is it that... We are here to take advantage of that gold in life. Who is not doing the right thing? Mm. These are some of the questions that we'll be asking ourselves. There are a lot of mineral resources in this country. The Chinese are taking it away. People are buying it from the black market. Government is not getting taxes for that, and we are only getting trouble from that. So it is very important, especially for the next coming government, the cash cow of this country will now remain, will be the solid mineral sector. And also we have to also take advantage of the booming economy, the booming market in the agricultural sector. We have a lot to produce in this country. But the way we are farming is not helping anybody. Uh, up till today, our farmers remain peasant and illiterate. So we are not going to feed this country well. And uh, the revenues that we are supposed to get from export, we are not going to get it because we are not exporting. We need to export. See, look at what is happening in Ukraine. If a small country like Ukraine can hold the whole world at ransom because of their wheat, how many places, good places do we have to produce wheat in this country that will be equal to that of Ukraine? We have plenty of that land. Mm. Look at fishing. What are we doing? We are getting nothing from, from fishing. We are not exporting fish from this country. We have the potential to do that. A lot of other materials, raw materials, but nowadays we are not even talking of the raw materials. We are talking of the, for us to add value so that we can export and get more money. All right. So you see, uh, uh, many of us are not doing what they are supposed to do because we felt that we are just okay with the oil money. But thank God, within the last eight years, we have seen tremendous improvement from the non-oil sector. 
Now it may interest you to know that the revenues we are collecting in this country from the non revenue uh, from the non oil sector surpasses of that of the the oil sector, the oil sector. and mm -hmm. maybe because of the bunkering, because of the piracy and so on and so forth, because of dishonesty, we are not getting what we are supposed to get or what we are normally getting before. Mm -hmm. Now the we are just getting about one point something barrel per day, which is not. Um, which is not equal to what we are supposed to get. Formerly, it's about two point about, about two point something billion barrels of oil, but now it has dropped to one point five because of thieves and mm. so on and so forth. So because of that, the revenue is no more coming as it was, and uh, the revenue from custom is on the high side every year. For example, revenue from the custom, they are surpassing their targeted uh, budget in the in, in the budget. They are exceeding their limit. Let's say 110, 120 percent. So the customs are doing very good. Oh, great. Yes, in right. terms of the revenue of the country and uh, other sectors also. Mm. All right. So I understand that um, the Revenue Mobilization and Location and Fiscal Commission um, Amendment Bill has um, scaled second reading at the Senate. And the sponsor of that bill said that the bill sought to reinforce the mandate and powers of the commission, like you stated, as the body, body saddled with the responsibility of monitoring revenue um, generation and disbursement on behalf of the people and government of Nigeria. Now, and he also stated, I will take what he said. He said it also seeks to make it unlawful for any commission, board, or revenue generating agency of the government of the Federation to withhold remittance into the Federation account of revenues. Help us make better meaning of that clause. What? Help us make better meaning of that particular uh, clause. That well, he made. what we are saying is, uh, you see, there are fundamental problems as far as these remittances are concerned. Mm -hmm. Like I've said earlier, we don't have powers to impose. We don't have any sanction. We just look at you. We just advise you. You either comply or you don't. Uh, at worst is we go to the accountant general and say, okay, at a start or so period, we have not been able to convince you to do this. But you are owing this to the federal government or to the federation account. Uh, you can also take it directly from the from their allocation that is when it comes to the state but what of the agencies how do you get their money you know so we are looking specifically for powers to sanction if we have power to sanction you you oblige to comply with our advice like for example there are some agencies that we are empowered to supervise them but because we don't have that constitutional muzzle to sanction them some of them, the cooperation is not coming as it is supposed to come. So these are the issues that we thought to address through that review of the act. Okay. But this is for the chairman of the commission to explain more on this. But I'm just, uh, in my kind of way, I'm helping to say one or two things. But certainly, with more powers, there will be more money for this country. So we are urging the National Assembly to do what is expected of them so that we will em they empower us to continue to work for this country because everything without money is not going to work. When uh, we are also looking at, there are certain areas, there are certain establishments which were allowed by their act to raise money, to spend their money, and only to give out the surplus at the end of the year. This is not practical in Nigeria. So these are some of the areas that we are also looking, we are also advising that such places where huge amount of money is being spent uselessly, we're asking the government and the National Assembly to focus on those kind of agencies so that there will be more money for this country. You will agree with me that there are some agencies that are swimming in billions of naira. They spent madlessly. Are you going to name those agencies? No, yes. Uh, as a journalist, you should be able to find out yourself. I wouldn't want to indict anybody here, but there are. Let me tell you, there are. Because the laws that establish them says that they should return the money that they have collected and only to remit surplus. Uh, let me ask you, Nigerians, how many people will collect one billion? 
and spend 600 million. And just to come and say, we have, we have spent 600 million. This is 400 million for you. I, I, I don't think uh, we don't have honest Nigerians like that. So I think uh, such kind of laws should be looked into so that we'll be fair to other agencies of government. I want to believe that there are some agencies that badly need money to discharge their function. And their functions are also equally good in the development of this country. So we should look at it so that we'll balance this development. Those areas, those uh, institutions that are needing money, let them get the money to do what they are supposed to do. Oh. Look at, uh, for example, look at our Nigerian police. Yes, the president have tried for them by establishing the police trust fund. Uh, of course, there was a problem. There is a problem with it because some PDP governors went to court and said that that money shouldn't be given to the Nigerian police. So, uh, as it was envisaged by Mr. President, his whole vision has not been achieved. He had wanted he had wanted to modernize to equip the Nigerian police, the Nigerian police to have adequate money for their operational need. But uh, look at it, even in this Abuja, can you say there is adequate security? See their vehicles, very rickety vehicles. Is it the type of vehicle that our Nigerian police are supposed to use in this country? Even the other sophisticated gadgets and equipment that may need to provide for the protection for the security for the welfare of our citizenry you see they are not able to do it mm -hmm. because of lack of adequate funding so lots of people are badlessly spending billions of naira elsewhere some are starving for lack of money and they have a very very critical responsibility and to you don't play. have any um uh, any powers to also advise such agencies don't you to advise the agency to do what not to spend the money at least maybe to, there should be an equitable sharing because you talked about the police. If we're all working for the benefit of Nigeria, seeing Nigeria as the business, and then we are working towards pushing this business forward, at least you should be able to bring forth what you have to cushion the effect of the well, other Well, ours is to advise the government, not the agencies. We're advising the government on how to spend wisely. For example, like I have said, we are advising governors, see in some other state what is happening. A governor will appoint 500 political aides. Does that make sense? You are paying everybody monthly, and at the end of their tenure, you are paying them severe gratuity. Is it not a waste? These are some of the areas we are advising. And even when it comes to taking loans, we advise government on what loan to take or not. You talk, so there are a lot of issues, my dear. So right. uh, the advice is a continuous something until when you get somebody who will hear what you are saying. Because it's one thing to say it, it's another thing for somebody to act on what you have said. Mm. Now we understand that um, uh, the commission has a significant role to play in saving um, the local government from extermination, like which was be have been said over time, which has been the case. So how is the commission monitoring allocations to ensure that each local government council, 774 of them, gets the allocation that they are supposed to get and it goes straight to the account, judging from all of the protests and um, arguments around local government autonomy. That's one on the side. And secondly, I'm going to ask you two questions mm -hmm. and I'd like you to take them in one breath. Now for those local governments that have haven't conducted um, elections for a while. Who then and how, do, what happens to the allocation? Who, how exactly is that the allocation going to, uh, to them? Well, uh, like I have said earlier on, ours is to monitor accruals huh? and to disburse. We normally don't go to states and see what they are doing with their monies. Earlier than now, the commission goes to the state and sit in the joint accounts committee meeting of the state and the local government and uh, supervise what the state government are doing with the local government funds. But with time and uh, with democracy, you know that democracy is a very funny something, especially when it comes to constitutional matters. Later on, there was a judgment that says we don't have power to monitor the spending. Yes, we don't have the power to monitor the spending. 
but we have power to monitor and mobilize and to disperse. If we now give you your own money, it's just like um, a government and a civil servant, or you are employer and the employee. If your employer pays you your salaries, does he care what you do with your salaries? Is, is your own to go and uh, decide what you would like to do with your salaries? You either take food, you either buy liquor, whatever you want to do with your money is your own responsibility. So we don't have that such power to go to that level and see how they are spending their money. So we don't monitor them. We only disperse. But what we are doing, we make sure that each local government is well represented. That is to say, each local government is being given what is due to it. The several hundred and seventy-four of them. So we, as far as the commission, is, as far as the commission is concerned, we are working for the three tiers of government. That is the local government, the state, and the federal government. And we disburse these monies monthly to each tier of government. So the problem of the local government allocation has to do with the 1999 constitution. The 1999 constitution is a constitution that is mainly derived from the American constitution. And on that basis, the local government, for example, in America, they are creation of state, not the federal government. So in America, the federal government has nothing to do with the local government. But in Nigeria, it is supposed to be so. But being the type of politicians we are in this country, that was why the military, especially during Babangida's regime, recognized local government as a third tier of government. And it's been inserted in the constitution. So there is no any mad governor who would one day come down and say, I am raising this local government from, from, from my state. Oh, I am changing the local government headquarters from this place because you have not voted for me to another local government. So politically and constitutionally, they have been enshrined as a third tier of government. But operationally, the powers to determine the structure and function of the local governments is the powers of the State House of Assembly. That was why, if you can recall, before 1999, or after immediately 1999 to 2002, the tenure of local government chairman was three years. Mm. But immediately after that, some governors truncated this tenure to one and a half year, to two years, to whatever. But thank God we have now come to a standard, mostly throughout the country, the tenure of the local government is, 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 is two years. So you see, because that constitution gives the local government, gives the state powers to determine the function and structure, that gives them the power now to double into the revenue, uh, to the allocation of the local government. Okay, so for those local government that have not had election, who do you allocate their funds to? You see, the constitution of Nigeria does not recognize vacuum. It is seamless. There should be presidential election, there should be gubernatorial election, there should be local government election. It does not envisage any caretaker. That was why, like I've told you earlier, when President, President elect Bola Ametini was the governor of Lagos State, and not only that, even in my state, some of the state governors created more local government areas. And hence, the allocation from the revenue mobilization could not reach into those new local government areas because they are not being recognized in the constitution. Okay. So what the governors did at that time was to make it administrative areas. So when the money comes, for example, for your own local government, it will now be divided into two. It will be taken to the administrative area. So these are some of the administrative technicalities being used by governors down the level to meet their own political objectives. So it is really very difficult dealing with such a kind of situation. Mm. All right. So now let's talk about the commission's review of um, the renumeration of um, for political, uh, uh, um, judicial, and public office holders. How's that coming along? Especially regards to the fact that um, salary of judges has always created huge uproar and um, protest over time, and also 
the ongoing um, review of the remuneration of public servants, according to the chairman of your commission, was attributed to public outcry and the current economic reality in the country. So he also, I recall that he also stated that the exercise was aimed to close the gap in salary disparity. So who and who amongst the public servants would be affected or impacted by this review? Well, uh, thank you. Uh, like I've told you, I am the chairman of the Remuneration and Monetization Committee. And uh, we are saddled with the responsibility of determining the salaries of political, public, and judicial officers of the country. It may interest the viewers and you to know that um, the current Remuneration Act we are using, that is to say the salaries we are paying the political appointees and the judicial office holders is in place since 2008. And this is 2023. You will agree with me that it has come a long way without review. And um, like you have said, the judges are crying for a very uh, poor remuneration. And their salaries could not be reviewed because it is attached to the public and political, certain political office holders. That is the 2008 remuneration report. So because of that, they could not enjoy also a review. So there is outcry from their own sector and also from concerned citizens that the pace of the judges is very low in the country. And if it is very low, it means we cannot have a very good judicial system. We are going to have a very compromised system. We are going to have a very corrupt system. So it is important that they are, will be made comfortable with their tech companies. And we are working on that, like you have said. Uh, it was just barely toward the end of last year. In fact, we had wanted to review this remuneration since early last year, but we were not able to get funding for the exercise. Okay. It was only recently, around November, December last year, we received some funds to do the review. And uh, we have gone around the 36 state of the Federation to collect data on the cost of living. How much the spare parts of a car is being sold here and there? The cost of rent in Lagos is how much? In Patakot is how much? Abuja is how much? In Bauchi, in Gombe, in Yobe, in Taraba is how much? We collect all these informations. And then we also move to collect information of the political appointees in each state. These are the processes. Okay. So we have collected all this data. We conducted a zonal public hearing in each of the six geopolitical zones. We conducted public hearing on the review. Whether Nigerians will support the review exercise. So what was the result what, you got? What is, what is their opinion? How much they felt uh, it should be increased? And uh, we have received a lot of memoranda. We received oral presentations. We gave out questionnaires, thousands of questionnaires. And uh, we sat down, we analyzed all these things, and uh, we are coming out with a proposal. But I would like to tell you that um, we have two approaches to this issue. The one we are issuing out questionnaires and collecting memos from individuals and other concerned groups, that one we target as subjective, while we, on the other hand, we have also an objective approach. What is that objective approach? That is the scientific approach. Uh, as we now go to the market, we carry out a market survey. Having done that, we now come up with the CPI, 
consumer price index. So on that basis of consumer price index, if you are using it purely to increase the salaries of the political and judicial office holders, it's going to be very huge. Mm. If we are to use that scientific method, because doing that, like we have said, for example, the rent you are paying in Abuja for your house, if last four years you are paying two million naira, believe me, you are not paying the same two million naira now. I agree with you. Okay. So now because our time is fast spent and I already calling us yes. to actually round up. Now in the reg in this regard, I'm going to ask, is this supposed to are we are we thinking of increasing the salaries of these political office holders? Because we always get we've gotten a lot of um uh, questions coming from social media. Now someone says they keep saying that we need to cut the cost of con uh, of governance and yet the um, rem, uh, the Revenue Mobilization Allocation Fiscal AM Commission wants to increase the salaries of politicians and public servants. What a country of, um, we would like, I'm trying to understand what this person said, like, we would like to clarify if this review is to increase or to decrease. Okay, so uh, like like I said, we've actually gotten loads and loads of comments coming this forward. So are we thinking, is it, can we afford it at the moment as a country? Yes, what we, what we are doing as a commission, we are very responsible, we are very fair, and we are very just to everybody. No matter what the opinion of the public, we are not solely relying on the opinion of the public, we are also relying on the sciences, like I have said. So, if you are paying me to do a job, and you want me to do this job correctly, and you want me to do this job free of corruption, you have to pay me adequately. For example, if you bring somebody to come in and work as a minister here in Abuja, and you are paying him one million naira as rent, do you get one million naira house here? You are going to the market, you know. But what we are doing is, before we arrive at any review, apart from looking at the cost of living, mm. we also go in, look at the sustainability factor. All right. How much is it coming to the federal government? We are totally each position. If we are improving the salary by so-so, mm. now the salaries of all political appointees were so-so billion. If we are to increase, it's going to be so-so billion. If, for example, it is 10 billion, and by increase, it's going to be 25 billion. Now, what we do is, we look at the sustainability factor. All we right. look at the national income. We look at the GDP. We All look right. at the exchange rate. We look at the economy. We look, having look at all these things, we now total it. We, because we work with Central Bank, work with the Bureau of uh, Statistics. Now, if we total it and look at it, what is the national total, what is the total income? And how much are we spending? Is it affordable? Now, if it is affordable, we say, okay, we can go ahead. So we are not increasing the salaries a bit rarely. Okay. We are doing it scientifically. So, okay. yes, we are doing it scientifically. We are not doing it blindly. We are not doing it unpatriotically. We are doing it with all sense of patriotism. And mark you, the economy of a nation is a living thing. It's not something that is dead or it is not something that is stagnant. Despite whatever we are going, the economy of Nigeria has improved. And oh, it's going to be improved. Uh, it's going to improve more and more. So it is, I believe that the economy can withstand the pressure of the pre All review. Right. All right. So just before we let you go, finally, let's talk about lawmaker severance package, because I recall you talked something about it. Earlier this year, we learned that, that um, the National Assembly's proposed um, 30 Point seventeen billion naira severance packages exceed the your commission's um uh, that's the revenue mobilization and fiscal allocation commission's provision by about twenty seven point three six billion. So it was reported that the Senate President, that's Ahmed Lawan, and the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabiamila, and other lawmakers in both chambers of the National Assembly would get about thirty point one seven billion naira as severance package, which is the which severance package like for our viewers who don't understand that is the money paid 
pay to lawmakers after their four year tenure in office. So as this is contained in the 2023 appropriation bill. Now, what is the current salary? I keep getting these questions all the time. And I said I was going to bring it up to you. What is the current um, salary package allowance on um, salary package allowance of the president and this um, severance package? Well, uh, you see, as a commission, we have our own package. That is the 2008 remuneration package we are using for now. And it is in the public domain for everybody to see. It has been everywhere. So any concerned citizen under the freedom of information can go and obtain this. You can Google it. You can do every. This is a public knowledge. It is not something creative. What the National Assembly is paying for itself is alien to us. It is not within our law. We don't know the dynamics, the system, how they are operating at the National Assembly. You understand? So it is not for us to say uh, this much you are to take. As far as we are concerned, we have our own, which is the final law, as far as the National Assembly salaries and allowances are concerned. If they are taking something over and above what has been provided for by the Revenue Mobilization Commission, mm. I don't know. And uh, it is alien to the law. We don't know how they are getting it. Maybe it can be speculation. Because Nigerians, you know, we, many people can talk authoritatively even without the slightest information. They would just say whatever they feel they want to say, maybe because of the nonsense of the democracy. If you are saying something, go to the relevant authority. If you, are, if you want to find out the information, go to revenue mobilization, go to website, go to anywhere and see what is exactly being put in place for those people. Okay, so now for President Muhammad Buhari, that will be leaving seat anytime soon. Um, are you going to tell us his severance package so that some people would actually just oppose it when he leaves? Because the, a lot of people are already at the edge saying we are waiting to check what um, was brought in and then what he's living with. Well, uh, uh, as far as that act is concerned, and that is why we've deemed it fit to review it, I'm telling you, you are going to laugh if you hear what the president of this great country is collecting as a severance gratuity. Can you believe that the severance of gratuity as provided for in that act is only just about 10 million naira? What is 10 million naira to a president of a economy of as big as an Nigerian economy? Is that outside allowances? That is the severance gratuity. That is all he's getting. As you work as a government employee or as any employ employee of any organization, at your terminal end, they give you a certain amount of money. So this is the money that you are to get to cushion the, uh, the effect of losing your job. So if you are paying Nigerian president 10 million naira, or you are paying a state governor 7 million naira, or a federal minister, you are paying him 7 million naira, is that serious? I think I'm asking you whether, whether you feel uh, in some, like in some regional bank governors, some companies in Nigeria, there was a company that I know, a cement company, where the top executives were being retired and collecting 300 million, 500 million naira as severance gratuity. But I also have some companies that during the COVID-19 um, pandemic and the lockdowns, they decided to shut out um, staffs just because they could not pay th that staff. So like I asked again, are we following the, um, what we can afford? That's where I'll leave it. Are we actually following what Nigerians can afford? If you had uh, private organizations who shut out people because they could not afford them, they realized that, okay, we can actually do without X, Y, Z amount. Let's do with X, Y amount. Can we actually afford this? You see, there is a world of difference between government and uh, private sector. Government has to do with the welfare of the citizens. By employing people, paying them salary, it goes a long way in improving the welfare of the country. All right. And therefore, paying good salaries is part of government responsibility. 
and making you comfortable in retirement should also be part of the government responsibility. But in companies where it is pure capitalism, they are just after the profit. Even when they are making profit, even where they are making profit, they will still want to get the best out of the profit they can get. When we are talking of the COVID-19, some of the, if not for the federal government, some of the banks could have laid off their workers. You have forgotten that this ordinary, this worker work for you and generate enough profit for you. All right. And you cannot condone him for a period of one year because you are, you are, you are making losses. Is that fair to the worker? It is not. Now that the federal government stood and said that nobody should be sacked, and life goes on, and the banks are making profit. So you now see the difference between government and a private sector. The one is human, the other one is inhumane. Let's leave so, it at that. Thank you so much. Our time is fast spent. It's been a wonderful time having this uh, discussion with you, Mr. Kabir um, Usman Kukandaka. Thank you so much for your time with us. Thank you so much. Quite a number of things we need to discuss, but then our time is fast spent. Time is never our friend <laughs> on this we kind of matter. have time. Next time. <laughs> all right, then. Thank you so much. Uh, that's all we can take for this conversation today. We have been chatting with Kabir Usman Kukandaka. He is the Federal Commissioner, Revenue Mobilization, Allocation, and Fiscal Commission. And it's been a wonderful time here on D Conversation. I will see you next time. From the nation's capital, Abuja, I am Annabel Oji. God bless you and yours, and God bless Nigeria. <laughs>